Welcome back. This is Shadow Coast, and we are going to continue our legendary campaign, Skaven campaign, with Cleek. So let's load it back up. It's been a few weeks. Work's been busy, but I'm back at it, and we will continue on. So one challenge on Mortal Empires with Skaven will be managing that food resource we talked about I think in the the first video. And one of the challenges we're going to face is that as we expand and as we add each town, we actually increase the cap, the food cap. So right now you see we have 87 out of 115, so we're at 75%. Every time we have a new town, that out of number or the the maximum capacity increases, meaning you have to generate more and more food. So, something that we'll watch, and we're going to have to manage. So, we just started working on our second province here, and we're going to take on some dwarves here shortly. Before we do, I'm just going to reacquaint myself. Alright, we don't can't add anything. Finish this off. Which, um... I'm trying to decide. So one thing we're going to definitely want is Quartermaster. Lightning Strike, and you'll see that later. And then Renowned and Feared. So I think we're going to start working on this bottom tree. And I'm just debating on which one to, to pick. I'm going to go with Untainted. I don't think I'm going to have a lot of Untainted throughout the game. So if we can uh, get something to lower the uh, Untainted amount, that would be great. Let's look at our rights here. I think we're going to definitely use the dominating scheme for growth once we establish our second province. Alright, we can move. I am going to... I'm going to... Let's see. Let's start working on the uh, second campaign. And here, we're going to upgrade to Assassin's Hideout. Remember, we want the Assassin for that replenish troops component. And that's going to be very important. And then, let's see. Untainted one. Let's pull this up. So the second piece we want to think through and manage is going to be research. Overseer's lookout which is going to provide growth. More importantly, we're going to want the clan armory to start upgrading uh, clan rat units. There are core units as we spoke about. Clan armory. Alright, so this is going to have to go to tier 3. Now one thing here is we're going to have to face, we're facing some public order challenges here in a turn. Let's see what's causing that. Events. Corruption. Difficulty level. Alright, well. I'm gonna go with the. I'm gonna go with the resources. Hopefully we can start trading here. And if you actually no, I take that back. I'm gonna go we're gonna wanna start opening research. So we need the overseer's lookout to start that, so we're gonna go with that one. And I'm thinking I'm gonna regret this decision. I don't have a very large garrison. Clan rats are not content. You do have a warlock engineer. What, what? 
I think I made a mistake here, guys. I'm gonna start heading back. We're going to knock out that rebellion that's going to pop up here in a minute. And once we knock them out, we're gonna repair, and I'm gonna try to get an assassin in our army. So we can start getting the better replenishment, especially as we take on the dwarves. Um, I'm assuming they're going to field a couple 20 stacks that we're going to have to take on. So it's going to be a series of battles upcoming here shortly. The Assassin's great single target um, hero, so you kind of focus on and takes out competing heroes, which is always nice. Right, we're gonna come right here. Gonna make room for him, save a little on upkeep right here. Gonna have a rebellion. And then here, gonna go for untainted. I'm actually gonna upgrade. We want storm vermin. We like, like I mentioned, we're gonna want to have that. Where is it? Clan armory, so we can start upgrading clan clan rats um, through techs. We're gonna have a rebellion here. We're gonna knock out. We're gonna repair a turn, recruit an assassin, and then we're gonna head all the way back down here and finish off our second province. Um, hopefully, that doesn't take too long. See. Watch your back, tail. I take this back. So we have clan armory or clan barracks over here. So I'm actually Fan needs new better foods. I just made a huge mistake, guys. I cancelled it and uh don't do that. I meant to cancel this one. I'm actually going to deconstruct this one. And you're going to see CY in a little bit here. Um, for this, it'll allow me to um, build some more resourcing here because we actually have higher level clan pit in Mount Arachnos. This was a big mistake. I should not have stopped the assassin side out. I just effectively lost a turn. Um, don't don't make that mistake. That's the challenge with legendary. Um, you want to always think twice, click once. Did not do that there. So don't make that mistake when you're playing your own legendary campaign. It can be very costly. Speed it up. So one thing I might do just to let public order get a little lower, I want to see if the next turn is going to still be plus 20 as they grow their army, and we'll have a slightly bigger battle. So it looks like... I'm going to give them another turn. Um, I'm going to upgrade to Overseer's Outlook so we can start research. And uh, down here, we're level two. We already have a rubbish pit. I think we're gonna go for public order. Yes, yes. Lesser clans bow before quick. Gonna actually heal some more. Let them grow another plus 20. We're gonna fight that battle. Just warm up my micro skills. Easier to do that on a rebellion. When we fight the dwarves, it's gonna be a little more complicated. Now, one thing I've noticed here when you fight Skaven, you can actually obtain artillery units. So, plague, claw throwers if you replenish troops, I think. So I'm hoping we can actually get one or two of those. And if we can, that'll be infinitely helpful against the dwarves because they do field um, a fair number of ranged units. So that can just kind of hammer them. All right, 
so we're gonna get an ex extra plus 20 turn. We're gonna go ahead and fight this. Um, it should be hopefully an easy battle, as long as I don't screw it up. And then we are going to heal, recruit our assassin, and go take on some dwarves. Looks like they have mostly melee units. This would be good to warm up my micro skills. Quick head taker. What, what? Alright. I kinda want Quick to be up on the hill here. I'm gonna my storm vermin sword and sword and shields off to the side we have some spears we're gonna have those guys kind of run I'm just gonna group all my missile infantry together and I lied I'm gonna have clan rat spears protect my artillery they're gonna they might try to use um, the menace from below talent or tactic. Alright, I'm gonna have them focus primarily on uh, their hero, which is ideally what I'm going to want to do. How are we doing, guys? Let's see. Got these guys surrounded. Should hopefully tear through them. Buff Queek. Which 
will be good because we can replenish more, get more gold. Really want to kill the hero. It's early game we want. There we go. I think we got him. So, easily enough done. Some of our clan rats took a fair amount of damage. But we killed almost twice as many as we uh, lost. And we got their hero. So here you can see the stats. Um, Storm Vermin, Sword and Shield, clearly superior units. They're getting more kills. Kind of surprised our single target, um, replenish, and then, um, gonna finish him off. So, you saw that we got 15 food there. So one of the challenge and complaints with Skaven Mortal Empires is that to, to be effective, one thing a lot of people feel like they need to do, and we're going to see if we have to do this, which we might, is actually um, keep rebellions coming. So level up your Skaven corruption, have a bunch of rebellions, and have um, kind of defensive armies go around knocking out rebellions to generate food. And that becomes you know, especially important when we have 10 or 15 towns. I think it goes up three or four, maybe five capacity per town, uh, depending on the level of the town. And um, then you're getting up to 200 uh, max capacity. So, you know, if not higher, 250, you're going to have to generate a lot of food to maintain that percentage. Because again, this is all about the percentage, um, which makes it challenging. So one thing I might do, and if we look at the, so you can kind of see Skaven Corruption and the, the levels it's at, um, and uh, if it's going up or down, um, which is nice. But if we go down here and look at objectives, uh, take control of one of your most prized possessions, Caregate Peaks, so we're going to have to control um, this area. You know, once we get towards the end of the game, it's going to be easy to level up corruption. We just take out our untainted buildings so we can get 50% corruption um, in the different different provinces. And then we're going to have to have 17, 17 towns or settlements um, across these areas and 100 units. So the big piece here is the 17 settlements and making sure that... Um, we can manage our food throughout the the campaign but I think the way I want to attack this is um, you know Peak Pass is over here Eastern Band Bandlands is here Silver Roads here so we're gonna have to go north no matter what it looks like what I want to do is I want to get a nice little base of operation with these two provinces down here <laughs> Um, if we can keep the undead on either side of us happy, hopefully we can, um, ha you know, gain military access. We're just going to march up there and focus on those regions because they're going to be a key part of the victory condition. So something to, to think about as we progress. What I'm going to do here is going to the town. going to wait. We're gonna heal for two turns. I'm sorry to be annoying. I really want that assassin. Get him in, get him leveled up, and start that replenishment train. Also, you know, key to note here, I mentioned rat ogres. When we get rat ogres, it's the battle we can take on um, more, you know, 20 stacks a lot easier. 
If w without them as their main damage dealers, the clan rats, um, even if they're fully upgraded, they just don't do enough damage um, to be effective against more armored or heavily armored units. So before we really take on the um, dwarves, we want to think long and hard. So I'm looking at armor piercing damage, armor melee defense, melee attack. So I think we're gonna go for armor and melee defense. These guys are pretty weak if they get um they get hit. Okay, so we can start devious plans. We we're gonna need the clan armory. Night runners speed for infantry units. Um, we're going to start working on this. We're going to switch over to ferocious plans as soon as we we can. Sweet. So we're going to upgrade to three. Part of the reason we're going to do that is um, <laughs> just want to get our economy jump started here so we can support a few more units. Gonna take one more turn, then we're gonna march down and um, get ready to take on the dwarves. Now, some of you might be asking, why didn't I save up and and just get the rat ogres immediately? Um, it's a fair question. I think I wanted to start leveling techs and get some growth established first. In retrospect, I I might regret that decision, not getting the rat ogres um, immediately, because we, we might we might have some trouble with the dwarves. So we're gonna see how this goes. So here, the, the decision would have been instead of this uh, overseer's outlook, just creating the growth fats. I might come to regret that decision. If I'm being honest, we'll see. Alright, so this one's gonna give us growth and recruitment costs. Ooh, leadership and public order. So we all this stuff is good. It's a little bit quicker than the one down here. And we're gonna need to get to, to tier three, f 3 sooner. I should have leveled this one up to tier 3. Um. So, look, I'm not perfect. It's um, it's a fun game. I'm still learning as I go. We're gonna we're gonna knock out this rebellion. We're gonna have a lot of food, and then we can fully upgrade the lost plateau when we take it. Oh, we have an engineer too that was generated. Nice thing with engineer is. Um, we have extended mobility, which will be really important. So one thing that I think a lot of people forget about are items. Always check and make sure your heroes and lords have items. Um, you know, and the best items available. I'm gonna get rid of this guy. Challenge me, me. Increase mobility. Gonna Can camp out me? here. We're gonna stay there we have positive public order in our base province we're gonna wait for the rebellion to trigger i don't want to march all the way down and then start losing things to rebellions it's um it can be very frustrating i'll be honest with you guys if you guys are running your own scaven campaign higher prioritize the rat ogres i think you're gonna see here the dwarves are gonna be very difficult since we basically have clan rats and a few heroes doing a lot of the damage. I don't know if this video is going to be able to get into a lot of the dynamics, um, in or not dynamics, the fighting with the dwarves. Just given timing, I'm trying to keep these roughly half an hour, so I'm going to have to check timing here in a minute. All right, we're going to. I know these are a lot of turn waitings. Um, I do apologize. Come on. 
We're just waiting for this rebellion to trigger again. And we're also letting our primary or first province of uh, the public order to increase. So we have a little more time before it triggers another rebellion. Once we are able to field two armies, which we should be able to do after we secure the second province, it's going to be a lot easier for us. Another option, and so one of the reasons why I wanted to secure this province, right now we're actually not at war with the dwarves, last I looked. One of the reasons I wanted to secure this bottom province is that if we actually start heading north right now, the dwarves that we start fighting up north, they will either confederate or have the dwarves down here join in on them, and then they effectively backdoor steamroll us. Um, coming up through. So it's better to take care of them up front. That's that's kind of what I arrived at. Um, and so that's what we're going to do. Right, so if we step here, it's still going to trigger. I'm trying to measure being all out aggressive with making good sound decisions. As you guys saw, I made a few mistakes already. And um, what I don't want to do is have this campaign end really before it begins. And it takes a few turns to establish yourself. One of the things on Legendary 2, and, and I think Skaven's the most difficult, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to pick them, especially with the food dynamic for later in the campaign. One of the, the the challenges with legendary is the first call it 50 to 80 turns are very difficult once you start fielding tier 3 tier 4 and then once you ultimately get tier 5 units you can you, you normally do pretty well um, because you have to take on the strongest enemy that you know is going to fight against you and once you knock them off a lot of the other uh, you know the AI computers they generate a decent mix of units but they don't go all tier 5 so if you have a tier 5 army you can normally crush fairly easily um, everyone else and I did not realize this but when Quick came in there he got plus 15 which is great I guess um, what we're gonna actually do here is so we didn't trigger a rebellion I should have just moved there first We're gonna grab the Lost Plateau. That plus Untainted actually makes a big difference, especially with public order when we see the swing away from Skaven Corruption. I didn't anticipate him being in the town to be that dramatically different, but it went from a projected negative six to plus 15 something to keep in mind if you're trying to manage public order placing your hero in the town does provide more public order or settlement than otherwise we're actually at plus one here which is fantastic let's see Do I go growth bats? Uh, I kind of want to wait. Needy public order. Uh, untainted. For 720, for an extra untainted, trying to balance it out, I think it's okay. Alright, so this is where we have to decide, do we go out pure aggression or do we put some defensive measures in place? We are going to need rat ogres for the dwarves. It's all expensive though, and then I won't get tier 5. So let me take a second and really think through this. In our main base, we have the assassin's hideout. 
death runners I don't foresee us really using I do think we're gonna want the obsidian quarry definitely want to want growth fats in one of our towns and the hydra is fun so if we have four spots left one's gonna go to obsidian trinket maker let's say one goes to growth vats so we have two left and one goes to construction cavern so we have one left and one needs to go to slave wheels increase to income for everything so we will not be building defensive unit here which or defensive structures here which could pose a challenge later on so I don't you know I, I think we're gonna risk it we're gonna gonna upgrade this for the public order since we're not gonna have defensive buildings we're gonna go for all income generating here and then we're gonna get that um, eventually get that those slave wheels which are really gonna increase the corruption but it's going to generate a lot of extra income so one thing that all right, we're just gonna, gonna establish this to fully establish this and betrayal strong you're gonna see why we need rat ogre someplace four thousand Spend four thousand on this. What your bat tail? Four thousand, fifteen hundred. We're gonna put an alarm tunnel here, a little defensive. Um, gives us a little more utility, and we're gonna public order. I'm Great primarily discovery. focused on public order in our home areas. And you're gonna see why shortly we're gonna we're gonna utilize this one in a, in a minute all right so we're gonna knock out the rebellion that's gonna pop up here and I think I might call it an episode there before we take on the dwarves you guys are welcome to question and comment uh, the tactics I'm employing. You can play it different ways. It looks like I, I am taking a slightly more conservative approach now um, than, than just going tier 3, rat ogres, peer aggression, and expansion. I'm hoping that serves me well later in the game, we'll see. The reason I'm building a defensive platform on the Lost Plateau area is because these dwarves have given them too many turns, so they can field the the oh, AI Christine can field grows, multiple twenty stacks. And until I get lightning strike, I um I don't I don't necessarily think I can take on um, a twenty stack. Alright, so we're already back to negative. I did not click on this, which I could have sworn I did again. Not too much of a big deal. Time to treat leaders. Gonna build this, we're gonna get the tier three. Gonna start. 
Alright, I'm gonna take out this... Now one reason I want to take out these rebellions, I am a little bit nervous about the dwarves. And I don't I don't want these rebellions to basically hamstring us when we're taking them on. Cause we're gonna try to lure them out. If they have two twenty stacks plus a tier three or tier four town or settlement, um I we I can't take on sixty units. Um, for even 220 stacks, 40 units is going to be tough um, since I only have technically tier 1 and a few tier 2 units. And they straight up went for it. This is going to be challenging. All right, they have rat ogres, plague, bolt, catapult. There is no way. There's no way we can win this. We're gonna, we're gonna fight it. These rat ogres, you're gonna see, are gonna rip us to shreds. We're gonna fight it, try to kill as many of them as possible. We're gonna come and reclaim it. So this is what I was worried about. And why I think I'm going to build some defensive structures on places that will trigger rebellions. <laughs> if they're already spawning rat ogres, um, the the towns are just won't be defendable. Um, so we can kind of run at them. This is going to be ugly. We know we're going to lose. But let's see if we can like take out a unit or two. Clan rats! Alright, the unit we're gonna wanna focus on here. It's the weakest. Where are these rat ogres coming from? Alright, we're gonna go full baskets in. Everybody focus on these guys. They also have a hero, which is fairly, um, fairly challenging. So yeah, want, look at these rat ogres. They are just demolishing our guys. This is why. I should have prioritized them, and I highly recommend if you, in your own scaling campaign, get these units first. I, especially watching this slaughter, um, I, uh, I made a big mistake there. Alright, it's over. Part of the campaign, guys, you're gonna lose towns. I thought I had this secured. That's why I leveled it up to, was in the process of leveling it to level 3. I should have um, been smarter. Hopefully we can, with whatever units we do have left, soften a few of them up. Um, and those are the plague. Uh, catapults you're seeing. I am a little surprised I was not expecting them to um, attack me on the turn they spawned. I, uh, let's see, can we, come on, they're gonna heal a little bit, so let's see if we can, um,
All right, let's um, we have to backtrack a little bit here. Our twenty stack should crush him, which we'll do. The frustrating thing here is we just um, with our food supply, it's gonna. Move your tails. Extra replenish troops. Extra mobility. Thirty growth or ten growth extra. Mm, I don't think it's worth it. Alright, they have a turn to heal. Part of the game, have to manage the rebellions, um, which is one of the, that negative eight to public order is one of the challenges um, you face. Let's see if we can take him on. I might fight this battle. If it looks like because we're gonna win in a landslide, um, I'm not gonna fight it. If there's some questions, if it's questionable, then I will. Me so yeah, we failed that mission. Not surprising. I'm gonna kick this guy out. And you'll see why. Let's see. No wow, they literally disappeared. Alright, that's so weird. The AI. We're definitely gonna upgrade um, public order. Oh, we're gonna upgrade. Untainted one. So that really set us back. Um, I do like this growth. We no longer have our tier two. Um, dark omen. Barracks. So that clan armory, we're gonna be pretty far behind on getting. Um, getting our upgraded to clan rats, which we really need to prioritize ASAP. So, lessons learned guys, definitely learn from my mistakes for your own campaign. Just make sure you actually do build your clan pit, clan barracks, and clan armor armory in your main town. Just get it done. Um, once you get the clan armory, make sure you prioritize uh, this top tree. You see some nice benefits. Casualty replenishment rate is fantastic, but most importantly, um, it's these two that you want. Melee attack, charge bonus, armor for your clan rats. Uh, and that, those apply to the ones from Menace Below. So thanks for watching the third installment of the Legendary Skaven campaign for Mortal Empires by Shadow Coast. We made some mistakes. Hopefully you guys gained some good learnings. And we will continue this episode later. Thank you.